Hello, I'm Graham Makepeace Warren, Head of Engagement at Manx Wildlife Trust, and I'm here with my colleague David Bellamy, who's Head of Conservation and Land at Manx Wildlife Trust. Hello. And we are at MWT Coldowry Nature Reserve, which is sponsored by Manx Telecom, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about it. This was our first uh, nature reserve to be sponsored uh, by a corporate sponsor by Manx Telecom three years ago now, so they recently renewed for another year, which is fantastic. And that's kicked off a load of other sponsorships which have been really useful for us. So most have sponsored our MWT Community Wetlands in Onken, and they've also um, Appleby have also sponsored the Ayers Nature Discovery Centre uh, up in the Ayers. So um, it's really triggered uh, a wave of corporates coming forward and offering money to help MWT WT maintain these sites because it does cost a lot of money. So now let's go with David and have a look inside and see what's special about this site. So David, tell us what's special about Kuldari. But Manx Wildlife Trust acquired Kuldari back in the 1970s and since then it's become one of our flagship reserves for both nature and people being so close to Kurt Michael. As the seasons change, you can see different types of wildlife here. So starting in the spring, uh, the, it supports a profusion of native wildflowers um, that are typical of our Manx woodlands. As spring develops, then we get um, a whole cacophony of bird song. Um, and here we have breeding birds that start from the smallest gold crest up to the, the mighty buzzard. And then at autumn, this time of year, uh, again, it supports a wide variety of uh, woodland fungi. And then winter, everything really kind of dies down and, and rots down as that, that natural cycle uh, starts all over again. So what have we got here, David? So we've, we've got a, a dead tree that's um, fallen down here, so lying dead wood which you can see is supporting a wide variety of, of mosses here, but also given it's autumn, uh, some of these puffball fungi and, and all, all fungi are really nature's recyclers. So if it wasn't for fungi and also invertebrates, when deadwood fell, it would just stay here for, forever. Uh, but this is in the process right now of recycling this and, and taking those nutrients back down into the earth. This is a really magical place, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Personally, I think that Kuldari is one of the most beautiful glens on the island and of course we have loads and loads of beautiful glens. What makes this really special for me is how close it is to people. It's open every single day of the year, all through the day for, for locals to come and enjoy nature at its finest. Of course, uh, woodlands are quite an expensive habitat for us to manage. Any area with trees, especially mature trees, can become quite expensive in terms of manning, managing uh, tree safety. And we're, we're seeing that costs for woodland sites are spiralling at the minute, especially with the recent arrival on the Isle of Man of ash dieback, which is then compounding on um, Dutch elm disease really now getting out of control on the Isle of Man. So sponsorship by Manx Telecom allows us to keep these sites open to the public uh, and look to manage more sites like this here on the island. So David, what's the money that we're getting from Manx Telecom enabling Manx Wildlife Trust to do here? So it's doing a variety of things. It's allowing us to maintain public access, manage all that tree risk uh, that this site faces, but also we're looking to get it in better ecological condition. And being a quite um, tight woodland surrounded by gardens, it's not surprising that a lot of garden escapes have found their way into Kildare. So just here, I've got a plant called Monbrisha. This is a, a human-made plant, it's not native to anywhere on the planet. Uh, and you can see it, it has these corns or, or bulbs. So when these break off, it's really easy for these to roll down the steep banks from surrounding uh, gardens and spread throughout the site here, which reduces the available space for our native species. Uh, this site has a, a variety of issues with invasive species, including rhododendron, laurel, Japanese knotweed, uh, and recently some gunnera, uh, which is a, a type of rhubarb from native to South America has established itself here on the reserve. They're giant, aren't they? Huge. Like prehistoric. Yeah. Uh, and of course, all these things now need managing. So uh, the sponsorship from Manx Telecom is allowing staff time to coordinate volunteer effort to come in and remove all these species, which can be quite difficult, take a long time, and be very expensive where contractors are involved. Yeah, we had a good day last year with uh, um, Max Telecom pulling Monbrisha up and we're going to be doing it again shortly. Well, there's no shortage of Monbrisha to pull up here at Kulderi. Fun times. So, is this Japanese knotweed? 
Yeah, so this is a, a Japanese knotweed that's established itself on the reserve here in recent years. Um, it is one of those plants that uh, was imported because people thought it was quite interesting to put in their garden. And one of the problems we find with invasive species is they all tend to be quite pretty, which is part of the problem because that's why they were brought here and planted and cultivated in, in the first place. Uh, Japanese knotweed can be a, a huge, huge problem. From an ecological point of view, as you can see underneath, it tends to shade out whole areas and, and no natural flora can really support itself under this dense canopy of Japanese knotweed. But economically, it's also a problem because if it gets into uh, the foundations of your house, for example, it can undermine those and, and cause real structural problems. So this is one of the species that we're now tackling uh, thanks to the sponsorship from Manx Telecom. But it is really expensive and it does unfortunately require a herbicide to be injected into the, the stem itself um, using a, a specially qualified contractor at great expense. Um, so yeah, hopefully the, the days are numbered for the Japanese knotweed here at Kilberry. Nasty stuff, and is it fair to say that we wouldn't probably be considering this without the input of funds from Max Telecom? Uh, that's a good point because, because it's so expensive and it also uh, requires numerous uh, treatments year after year. There's no point starting on Japanese knotweed unless you've got the money in the bank available to start the project and then see it through out to its uh, completion. And the job isn't done until every single plant is gone because otherwise, as with all invasive species, it'll just come back. So this is going to be a real significant long-term project for us at Manx Wildlife Trust. So David, it looks like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's had a fight with a predator here. What's going on? So a couple of weeks ago from where we're standing, you wouldn't have been able to see anything at all because this was an impenetrable jungle of rhododendron, a non-native species uh, from Asia. And what we've had over the last few weeks is our amazing band of volunteers, uh, the, the midweek muckers, have been coming through here and doing the initial clearance of this site, letting, as you can see now, natural light come down to the, to the floor. And once we get rid of this in time, uh, this will allow our native species to make a comeback here at Kuldari. So there you have it. Manx Wildlife Trust, Kuldari Nature Reserve. Come and have a look. It's just near Kirk Michael, uh, park at the top of the road into Glenwell and Campsite and coming into a magical woodland nature reserve. And hopefully that's also given you a bit of an idea of just how important sponsorship is to us. So uh, have a visit to uh, www.mwt.im forward slash join or forward slash donate to get involved or uh, give us some cash to help out and make these things possible. Thank you.